Hello Space Cowboys and Distant Worlds Pilots and welcome to the core. Tis a silly place. Um, it's mainly silly because um, the root plotter does not know how to handle so many stars in such densely packed space. Um, nowhere else in the galaxy is the star density anywhere close to this and the root plotter can get stuck for a very very long silly amount of time. There is a skill to it, you can overcome this problem and I will go through some of the methods in this video. First I'm just going to show you the very quickest way to work out how to do it because you need to calculate a golden number which is the distance that the root plotter works perfectly. Then I'll show you how to calculate that using maths if that gives you more satisfaction I suppose it will speed the process up a little bit and then at the very end of the video I will explain why this whole problem occurs and why the solution works for those that are interested. I have linked in the description the people that have actually solved these problems in the first place and I'm just basically building on their own work without anything additional of my own so I suggest you go there and give them the reputation they deserve. So let us begin. Okay, we're in the core, and there is the bulk of the Distant Worlds fleet heading for Waypoint 10 for the meetup tonight. After that, there's a meetup at Waypoint 11, which is just next door to Sagittarius A asterisk, and I'm very much looking forward to that nice little break there for five days. I'm a little bit behind, as you can see, so let's try and catch up. Right, the first problem we're going to run into is this is the maximum jump range, and if we try and plot to it, it's going to take a very long time. Now, before I sh demonstrate that, I just want to show you, you need to know how to cancel a root plot, because once it begins, it's gonna slow down and everything's gonna come to a chug or like a really really bad chug so what you want to do is have the screen ready and have economical routes highlighted um, and undo fastest routes because those lines can also slow things down right so now that that's in place I'm gonna show you what happens it's gonna count up, gonna count up, count up and it's gonna get stuck uh, in case you're wondering how long it gets stuck for I once left it for half an hour um, and came back, it was still doing, and I quit. So, to be honest, it could be infinity amount of time. We do not have the data to answer that question. So, we're gonna struggle, keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing, and then we go. As soon as you select economical routes, it cancels the, the plot, and you don't lose your position, which is great, because we are going to trial and error our way down. Don't forget to select fastest routes. Trial and error our way down towards ourselves. I'm in this direction. Um, and get closer and closer and closer, bit by bit try different distances, 10 at a time let's say, fifteen, uh, 5 or 10 at a time until you get the golden number. If it doesn't work within 5 seconds, then it hasn't worked. Okay, I already know what my golden number is and I'm going to show you that it does work. It's actually 929, something like that. So 927 should work instantly. There you go. It wasn't instant, but it, it worked. It happened within five seconds, which is what you're looking for. So there you go. Trial and error. That's the quickest way of finding your golden number. And now from now on, every time I plot any route through the core, I will pick a distance about 927. Got it? Good. Okay, here we are on S. Van Diary's um, forum post explaining how it all works uh, and if you want to hone in on that golden number quicker you won't be able to work it out exactly but you'll get there quicker um, then you want to follow this equation so this is the equation I'm talking about and when you've got a number out of that that's when you can start doing trial and error from there it will save you a bit of time and it's more satisfying so let's just quickly run through that equation n is the maximum number of full range jumps you can do within 1000 light years so that 35 there is your jump range. Um, it, obviously it's going to be different for everyone. You do a thousand divided by that number and then you round down. So this guy can get technically 28 jumps. Okay, um, For you, you're going to have to do that calculation. Only have to do it once, obviously. M is the distance travelled by that number of jumps. So if you do your jump range multiplied by that, you, he gets 980. You could get, you know, whatever. Then, D is the distance you are from Sagittarius A star. I guess the reason he's included that is because the closer you get, the harder it is. So, um, so if you're about 15,000 light years from it, uh, from it, then it's 15. Um, it's in thousands of light years. So then you do this equation, you get a number. So for example, he gets, say, within 5,000, he gets six, 963. And then the next step is, forget all that, because I've already shown you how to get around that, and this is quite old. The latest version gives you other tricks. Um, but uh, once you've got that number, that's when you can start subtracting and doing your trial and error. And you should get there quicker and you should feel a lot better about yourself because you've done maths. Yay, maths! Okay, now we're going to talk about why it actually happens. So why does this problem occur? 
we can understand this by considering how the root plotter calculates its paths. What it will do for the vast, like the very, the most of the jumps from where you are until close to the destination is just use a very simple algorithm. The next star in the sequence should be as far as possible that I can reach and it should be in as straight as line as possible and pretty easy to do. Pretty straight lines come out and you've seen it, it does it very, very quick calculation. When it comes to the end, that last jump there is going to be significantly less than your maximum jump range and the root plotter doesn't like that. What the root plotter likes to do is try and have an even distribution of jumps as you can see over here. It tries to aim to divide those last three jumps into numbers that are quite similar because it's more efficient on your fuel. That basically um, is where the problem lies. When it's very there's not that many options to think about and calculate and compare then the calculation is done very quickly in the vast majority of the galaxy you won't even notice this the problem comes in the core in the core the stars are much more densely packed much more and the number of possibilities it has to go through on those final few jumps is immense absolutely immense um, and that's where it can get stuck for literally hours or as I say it could be infinite amount of time what we want to do then is we want to take that final destination and bring it closer and closer and closer so those last two jumps are already pretty close to your maximum jump range. I'm going to demonstrate that with an elastic band analogy. Let us imagine that the last two or three jumps is represented by the distance between my thumbnails and the elastic band, at least one side of it, represents the root plotter's options. The elastic band becomes slack when the distance between my thumbnails is not a nice multiple of my maximal jump range. So, for example, if we're saying the last three jumps um, and this is significantly, significantly less than triple my jump range, then the elastic band is very slack. And as you can see, the elastic band now, in this case, has lots of possibilities to go through. And if there's stars all around here, then it will literally find a million lines to go through all of them and I have to calculate each one. What happens is, is if those last few jumps become a, a nice multiple or very close to a nice multiple of my maximum jump range, the elastic band becomes tighter because it has less options to work with. In that case, there's much less alternatives to go through and the calculation is done a lot quicker. As demonstrated here, these two are, as you can see, he's, he's done it quite visually accurately. These two are basically close to his maximum jump range. So therefore, it can only wiggle around that straight line path a little bit so it's going to go through that, it's going to go through that, it's going to pick that, and it's going to decide which of those three, and only three, are best, and that only takes a second, as opposed to having lots to choose and pick from. Okay, I hope this video has been helpful, and you are now able to successfully, easily and quickly plot your routes through the core, and remember that if you want to plot anything significantly less, you're still going to have to find a golden number in that region. My golden number, as you can see, isn't the maximum either, but, you know, I found it, I'm going to settle with it doesn't make a difference to me um, but hopefully you've got the basics and now that you know how it works you shouldn't run into any further trouble and the core will be as beautiful and as unproblematic as it should be so you can enjoy its beauty and its amazingness and let's face it it is the best place in the galaxy okay see you on the other side distant worlds pilots and so long space cowboys